What's going on, everybody? It's Real with Jordan and Demi. I'm here in LA with Chaperone. What's going on? Hey, everyone. And in New York, we got Demi Ramos. Hey, Demi. What's up, you guys? We're just here. It's cloudy, and it's, uh, it's kind of a, a bummer kind of a day in LA, but we're having a good time because uh, we're talking about music and someone who's really, you've really, in the last year or so, have just, your career has just taken up. What's the ride been like the last year? I mean, it's been really fun. It's a little overwhelming right now. Um, the album's about to drop in like three weeks, so. Yeah. I'm a little overwhelmed. Um, it's been very fun, though. It's been one thing after another, after another, after another, so. But it's a dream come true, honestly. You know, what's interesting is that the difference between now and maybe 25, 30 years ago is that you're releasing your debut album, but you've released a ton of singles. You know, um, you've been touring a lot. You've done a lot of music videos. So it's not like you're like, it's like brand new or something. Mm -hmm. But it is your debut album. Does it feel, what's the, does it feel substantial? Does it feel like, what's the, the feeling that you're, you know, right now or as we're recording this year, we're about three weeks away from the album coming out? Um, it's the largest body of work I've put out. It makes me feel, even though you don't have to have an album to feel like a real artist by any means, for me personally, I'm like, oh, th I have skin in the game now. Like, this is, like, my flag in the sand right. type of thing. Right, I right. love that right. metaphor, flag in the sand. Mm -hmm. Have you ever heard that? That was hard. No, nah, I've never heard oh. that. That was hard, though. Okay. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. Where did it all start for you, like in your in your journey? Where do you where was that like aha moment that you were like, all right, like music is is that thing for me? Um, I just wanted. I just thought piano sounded really pretty, so I wanted to learn it whenever I was eleven or twelve. Yeah. And then randomly, I could just sing one day, and so I just became the girl that could sing, and it's just kind of been my thing <laughs> ever since I guess I don't know. I love writing music like it makes me feel very I, I would say when I was 15 that's when it really hit me that writing was important to me you're from uh Willard Missouri uh just northwest of Springfield my neck of the woods as a Kansas Cityan as oh, cool. I will be visiting the Ozarks this time next week I will be in a town called Ava Missouri which is about 30 miles east of Willard so um, what is Missouri like y'all like it what? is it is it is uh well the part where chapel's from it's it's um it's Trump country for lack of a better term um there's lots of uh Baptist Bible schools and things like that a lot of um Jesus saves billboards a lot of knickknack antique shops on the side of the road am i pretty i'm getting it pretty good right yeah like lots of farming farm yeah people. The, the narrative that's been put out there by a lot of people from smaller towns is that you know you had to get out because people didn't understand you and and you know the small town life was too stifling and everything like that is that your story or do you have a more of a fond you know feeling for for your hometown i think i have both i love the peace I feel when I'm alone in, at, in like at my parents' house in the, the field or whatever, I feel very peaceful there. But yes, I feel like I needed to escape to do what I wanted to do. Right? See, yeah. and you, you could have worked at Bass Pro and had a good job there. I almost know? wore a Bass Pro hat to this. That would have been good to rep represent, I represent. I could never work at Bass Pro, though. No. You know, I mean, I think people in L.A. think that, like, they, it's crazy because I think of people who, wore the Bass Pro hats here, like at the flea markets, where to go to Bass Pro, I don't think they would fuck with it, like, at all. No, you know what I no, mean? No, 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 not at all. Um, so, how, what was the transition like going from Missouri to, now, you, you moved to New York first, right? Or you, you oh, lived no, in New York? I've, no, I've always lived either Missouri or LA. Oh, okay, okay, mm -hmm. my mistake, my mistake. Mm -hmm. But what was that, what was it like going from, you know Missouri to LA what was what made you say okay this is for real I need to get out there and get out of out of Missouri and LA is the place to go um well LA is where the music industry is for the most part for that sure. or Nashville I actually went to Nashville whenever I was like a teenager and c took some like song like singing lessons or whatever and everyone was like you need to go to LA like you're not country artist and I was like okay um so I went to LA and moved out here when I was 
18 and I didn't have any friends or family. So How supportive was you, were your parents, were your, your, was your family of the move? They were very scared, and I still think they are scared, but I think that, like, they've just always been so supportive and um, emotionally. Like, I was here, like, struggling financially <laughs> for, like, <laughs> until, like, this year, so. Um, but it was a very hard move to move to a new city where you didn't know anyone, and the only way I knew how to meet people was, like, through, like, going to a church or something, you know. And I didn't go to church, but yeah, I made friends. Do you remember your first song or your first couple songs that you wrote when you were younger? Yeah. Do I they mean, still stand up in your head? Do they still stand up? No, I mean, every song I wrote was, like, five and a half minutes. Oh, really? Yeah. You know that? I think everyone wow, writes. Wow, that's interesting. That's you know, different. You write ballads whenever you're a new songwriter. It's just like the easiest thing to do. And not everyone, obviously, but most pop writers I know, it's much easier to do ballads just because it's easier to write sad songs. So that's what mine were about for like five years. And now you're known as this, I guess alternative alt pop is kind of the, 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 the name that people throw around now. Hmm. Um, how do you feel about the whole like label thing or like the way the music industry kind of pigeonholes artists? That's a big question. What and what do you mean? In what way? Like, do you feel that um, because you're labeled a pop artist, do you feel like you it would be hard to return to those five minute long no, songs? No, not at all. I mean, I have like a variety of music on my album. So there's ballads and yeah. long ass you know pink pony clubs like what almost fucking five minutes or something like right. it's so like and i don't know and i love it because we're in this this era where all these songs that are like two two and a half minutes long so i love mm -hmm. a good four or five minute long song i f feel there's a little bit of you know cindy lopper yeah. vibes to, to yeah your, for sure for um and you know i you know uh carly ray jepson and taylor swift have, have been thrown out there but um when you were, you said you, you know, your first few songs were longer and stuff. When did you start to kind of hone your, your pop song craft to kind of, how did, how did the current Chapel Roan sound, how did that come about? It was a lot of trial and error, like four years of trial and error and me just having to be okay with being campy. And cause I just was never campy before this. Um, and to be camp, you have to feel stupid. <laughs> like you just have to feel annoying and feel loud and obnoxious and and I still struggle with it to this day like just allowing myself to be silly but it took years for me to even allow myself to write songs like that but is there do you feel like you're kind of like have a, a character or a persona when you're performing versus the real like chapel yeah I would say that it's more of like a drag queen persona. Like I pretty much am in drag every night on tour. So it's like, I'm just like, Chapel is my drag name. Like my real name is Kaylee. Mm -hmm. And Chapel Rona is like my drag queen name. Nothing says that you were born in the 90s like being named Kaylee. I don't mm -hmm. even, don't wake me up. I know. I fucking know. <laughs> it's, Why? It's so Why is that Kaylee? It, okay. just, it just sounds like a very it's 90s Midwest. Name. It's yeah. like a Midwestern like Kylie, Kaylee, Keely. Yeah. I do have a friend, Kylie. Mm. I was just talking to her, and yeah. she is from the Midwest. That's actually, but it's Kylie. Yeah, it's similar. There's a lot of like variation. Not, not K Y though. It was like K A, you know. Yeah, mine's like K A Y L E I G H. Like my parents. Yeah, really... oh, that's crazy. And and your stage name is a uh, is a tribute to your grandfather. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, my grandfather. And I I was speaking of grandparents. Um. Was that your grandparents in the in the um, Hot to Go video? Yes, or? yeah, those are my grandparents. <laughs> yeah, was that, was that the, East, the 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 chapel or is that the wrong no. side of the family? Um, other side. Other side. Um, my grandfather Chapel actually passed away, so I named myself like, in honor. Mm -hmm. Gotcha, mm -hmm. gotcha. Well, let's talk about this. Well, first of all, we were talking. You just talked about your 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 drag queen kind of vibes and stuff like that. Um, your aesthetics are amazing. Your 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 album art, your videos. Um, have you always been in? A, were you one of those kids playing dress up when you were five? Like, where did the the love for fashion and all that come from? I was. I was very very into dress up, but then it like kind of went dormant for like ten years because I think there's a time in a lot of girls' lives um, where you just become like really ashamed of 
like femininity and so like there was a time i know a lot of friends who went through this like basketball short phase hair in a ponytail constantly like like wanted to be a tomboy like really rejected feminine femininity mm. <laughs> and um i was like in that phase for very like 10 years and then it i didn't really break out of it until i was like 23 so whoa that is so crazy you said that that just hit me so hard because it's something that happened to me too yeah but i never realized that and to know that you i thought it was just me but to hear you say that and to say that other girls have gone through that as yeah. well i think it's like that tomboy phase and like and um it just feels so much more comfortable because i guess you're like you become like this woman and it's such like a it's like a shock to you and you realize like all the things that come with being a woman okay. it's kind of like so you try to almost steer away from it as much as possible and now I'm finally out of it and that feels good so mm -hmm. damn what does that feel like to be out of it it feels very me I think it was really hard to get to the point where I can wear makeup like I wear and and outfits that are loud and colorful and gaudy um it feels very freeing it's a lot of work it's a lot of energy to dress like that and to perform in it um but it's very freeing and I feel like I'm honoring like the five-year-old version of myself who wanted to dress up like that. Did you want to be a pop star when you were five? Did you want to be a performer? That's not pop star, but did you, were you singing at family reunions or like, oh, I where never, did the performer come from? I was like, I loved Britney whenever I was little and Barbies and stuff like that. Yeah. And like, I love to dance and sing, but never like publicly. Um, I didn't actually do like my first real solo singing until I was like 13. So were you a theater kid at all? Um, I liked theater. Yeah. I wasn't like, it I, It wasn't like every th all part, you know, all consuming. Right. I should say I was more right. of a child athlete than theater kid. Now that you have, uh, first of all, you've, you did this spring tour that, you know, sell out crowds. And now you're about to go on this fall tour. Also some sellouts going on. Um, don't you just need to upgrade your venues? <laughs> <laughs> I wish it were that simple. <laughs> um, it's hard. I It's hard because you just don't know how it's going to go. It's fun, though. I like, and as someone who interviews people, it's wild when I get a press release, and then two months later, another press release, and they're playing bigger venues, or the song's bigger. It's like, it feels like it's growing in real time. Mm -hmm. You know, it feels like you're in a movie or something right now. It's super weird, because, like, the tour, I mean... It's almost all sold out. Like, really. Like, we haven't yeah. announced it yet, but... And that's not just a marketing ploy to get more tickets. Like, no, like, yeah. I'm just saying, like, if you don't have a ticket, like, you're probably not going to get it. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know. Like, um, but I think that, you know, we only... I, it was just my first headline tour in the spring. Like, we had no idea what to expect. And mm -hmm. the whole thing pretty much sold out in, like, a week. And so then we doubled the venues. And that was really scary. And now it's selling out. But it just sets you up for, like success in the future if you sell out a, a venue instead of like almost getting to sell out because then you can be like a hundred percent like yes we can move up the next level you know when you're about to perform about to go on stage do you feel what's the balance of nerves versus excitement are you a are you a nervous person or are you like hey let's go out and get there get it's it so person? it's so interesting because that's like the same feeling for me like my body does the exact same thing the like, adrenaline it's the adrenaline is the same with excitement or anxiety mm -hmm. so it's both i mean i can't even tell i'm excited like you know i was i was nervous the first show because i just was like i don't know how this is gonna go or like i'm nervous for big shows like la we're playing the wilton's 2300 yeah like you know, Philly is 2,700. I mean, it's massive, like, for me. So that I get nervous for, but I'm mostly excited because it's such a blast on stage. Maybe one day you'll play the John Q. Hammond Center. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I only like played the Galois a few times, but that's, like, kind of the only bigger venue you can go there. That's so it. That's it. And just for context, the, the John Q. Hammond Center is the big basketball arena in Springfield, Missouri. That would be that would be the big hometown show for Chapel. That would be. Yeah. It's like 15,000 seats, I think. Yeah. It's big. Um, what's the difference now that you've had this spring tour and you've done it once before in terms of like costumes and instrumentation and set lists? Like what's the what's it like? How's it different now? 
Oh, I mean, we have the album. We're performing the entire album. You know, like the album will be out like a few days before tour starts, and it's gonna be a long set. We, you know, the album is fourteen songs. Plus, we have some old ones. Plus, well, we have two albums, by the way. Yeah, that's, it's kind of crazy. It is now. Yeah, that's like '90s style when they would when albums were on CDs, so they just packed it with a bunch of tracks yeah. to make it longer. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but it's like the long set list. We have fun covers, like, you know, really fun styled outfits. And wow. I would say, I'm ready to go. I'm ready come. to go. But of course, I don't have a ticket. So you know, <laughs> if you don't have a ticket, you're, you're, no, no <laughs> dice. Right. Now, the album coming out, do you have any, like, let's do it right now before it comes out. Do you have any predictions on which songs will be fan favorites or is there any personal favorites off the album that maybe people haven't heard yet that are like unreleased? I mean, the lead single off of the album is called Super Graphic Ultra Modern Girl. And it's just an undeniable club song, like fun, in your face pop. And I think that it's just gonna be, I think people are gonna love it. I think that one. Yeah, that's yeah, my yeah. money. What have you been um, when you're on the road? Are you a like uh, a quiet, introspective, need my own space kind of person? Are you like, let's go out, let's let's get wild. I'm a quiet, yeah. introspective. Yeah, I, no, we've been getting that a lot, Demi. We've been getting that a lot lately of people who are just like chill on tour. Yeah, we don't have time I to think party. Anyone's ever said that they're like wild. Well, a lot of people will say that they like like to go out. They like to explore the cities and, you know, see the nightlife or whatever. Yeah. Um, I just think it's almost not possible, right? With just like the toll that like just performing every single day and like all that energy being exerted into like the freaking either. It's just not possible to like maintain that kind of lifestyle, right? For probably yeah. more than a few days. Well, it's hard because my shows aren't, it's, it's not just like, Sitting in sitting, sitting on a chair like yes, this. Yeah. yeah, it's not just like a, a slow folk show, you mm. know. And the outfits are difficult to move in. Do you have co you have co multiple costume changes? Is this yeah. like a this is like Madonna 1990 kind of stuff? Oh no, know? well I don't have multiple costume changes in the show by oh, okay. any means because that's really we'll get there one day. Okay. But yeah, every show is themed, so we have six different themes or seven and. I encourage the audience to dress up with me. So that's so fun. Wait, it's what? Fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, what have you been? What have you been listening to lately? Like, what are you into right now musically? I'm really into Hemlock Springs. No, I love. Not familiar? Are you familiar with? I Hemlock love her. Springs? She's amazing. Um, I love Grimes. I'm in like uh, like the indie, like electronic vibe right now. Yeah. Like, I love LCD sound system right now. Um, I I think I listened to Feist Let It Die album once a week, honestly, for like the past two years. Nice, um, nice. It's just like my favorite comfort album. But, I mean, I don't know. On the way over here, I was listening to, to Karma by Taylor Swift. It's like, I just love like, Pop. Are you, are you, do you consider yourself a Swifty? I was no, about to say, man. I, mm. I don't consider myself a Swifty because I actually don't know, like, her I don't think, I don't feel like I, I can have the honor mm. because, like, I don't know her catalog and, like, all the lore behind everything. Like, I can maybe name a few songs off of each album. Like, I don't know the whole the thing. The hits. Yeah, I can, I can name the mm. hits, but by no means do I have the honor of saying I'm a Swifty. Mm. <laughs> so, in terms of songwriting, are you a notes on your notes app person? Are you a real notebook person? Or are you a how do you like kind of store your your song ideas? Both. I usually write by hand though. Um, but for everyday life, I like listen for things and like every conversation and write them down in my notes app. But it's like, do you ever get writer's block? And yeah. Work? If so, what do you do? Like, what do you do? Um, you just have to kind of ride the wave of how horrible it is. Like, you just have to like be gentle with yourself because like pushing it is just it never works. So just step away for a few days, right? Or yeah, you like have to take a break and like just be gentle with yourself and not like, you know, get onto yourself about your brain not wanting to write. Like, it's just it's part of it. It's part of writing is is writer's block. You know. And 
let's move into production. Your production is amazing. Um, you've got so many sounds and you were talking about being into LCD sound system, more electronic stuff. Um, you've gotten some love from pitchfork recently. So the indie kids, the cool kids like you, which is, which you got the cool kids seal of approval. Um, how hands on, how, how hands on are you with production or do you just kind of send demos to a producer mm -hmm. and well, most of the album is written and co like pr co-written and produced by Dan Nigro, and he does like like the the like technical aspect of it, and like mm -hmm. like we bounce references off of each other, and um, he re I feel like he really understands what I want, and he has such great ideas. So um, it's mostly it's I mean yeah it's mostly him, but I'm I'm always in the room being like oh it'd be cool if we had like this sound or this sound right and, right and he would suggest something too right. it's really fun i mean he's amazing so he makes it easy <laughs> Is, have you kind of kept the same team together for yeah yeah that yeah helps. for that like helps five so years much. that helps so much yes it does because i feel like obviously all your songs sound different but i feel like even though you're just coming out of the debut album there's like a chapel Rone vibe there's like a like even not not like a sound so to speak but like there's a vibe that yeah. you have and i think that that's what comes through and i feel like other artists who kind of work over here with this person work over that person it kind of can be kind of choppy sometimes but it can be choppy because it's hard to sometimes you just like strike gold one time with one person yeah but like with dan i feel like we strike gold every time yeah <laughs> Do you have any desire to collaborate with people, like with other singer-songwriters? Oh, for sure. You know, have maybe a rapper drop a verse on a song oh my or God. something. Oh, my God. Doja. You know? I would love to work yeah, with Doja. Yeah, yeah. Doja Cat just shows up on one of your songs. I would love that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I would love to I would love to collab. Yeah. Maybe Demi Ramos could play guitar on one of your songs. <laughs> <laughs> now that you've got a little bit of a break, a little bit of a break here, you're doing interviews like this. Mm -hmm. um, what do you do when you're not doing music? What's your... I play video games. Oh, yes. Oh, she's oh, yes. a gamer? Wait, wait, wait. Yes. We have to talk about this. Time. So are you like a new games or old retro games? I mean, I love Mario Kart. I, I'm addicted to my oh, Switch. Oh, snap. You're a Switch, you're a Switch girl. I'm a Switch girl. I don't have an Xbox, but my ex did, and I played it all the time. <laughs> Um, I'm, a, I'm a retro video game person. What, what do you play? I play like old Sega Genesis, Super Nintendo kind of stuff. Oh, shit. I like, I like, I like uh, my favorite version of Mario Kart is on the Wii U with the Wii controller with, the, with oh, like, yeah. yeah. I've only played Wii U one or two times. Hell I've no. actually I'm considered, sorry. I don't know. I've actually considered doing video game playing segments with guests, but I was like, it's kind of nerdy, you know, like playing street fighter with someone while I'm interviewing them, you know, it's kind of, that's it's, fun. Yeah. I mean, I get bored while you're playing like a game. I feel kind of an existential, what am I doing with my life? I'm wasting time kind of feeling, but I don't get, I feel great. Yeah. Like, I feel like it's like doing like an Switching inner child your... work like situation where it's just like, oh, you know, something... when you put it like that. Yeah. I, I like loved playing video games it. with my friends and siblings and mm -hmm. it kind of just throws me back to that comfort. So the, the big question is how much time have you spent on Tears of the Kingdom? I haven't. I haven't started it. I'm doing Breath of the Wild right now. Oh, okay. That's because I, I was like, I have to do this one first. Okay, so you're because like I hear it's better than Breath of the Wild. Right. But I just got Breath of the Wild like maybe a week and a half ago. And I play it every day. Okay, so you got a long journey ahead. Oh of my you. god, I am like, um, yeah, I probably next summer I might be. What's your What's your tour bus slash entertainment setup on tour? Do you have like a TV gaming setup? in your van slash bus like what's the deal i mean in the bus this is the first time we're going to be on the bus in a few weeks i've never had a bus um but in the van i just does like, it have your name on the side no oh, my oh, god no no, no I that's wish. when you know you made it when you got your name on the side that's when you're like playing the jonky hammond center yeah. Isn't it? yeah 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 i just like play my switch and like in the back and just mm. like read or something yeah yeah nice i love it i love it have you had a tamagotchi though I didn't have a Tamagotchi. I never did. I know, isn't that crazy? What were yeah, what were you what were you into as a kid? Were you into video games? Were you into girly stuff? Were you into sports? Like I was into to GameCube a lot. I loved I mean I also played soccer. I love Barbies. I would like like drag my Barbies literally through the mud. Like that's not even an exaggeration. Like I would put them on a dog leash and drag them around. Like it's crazy. 
Like I was so That's weird. Different. <laughs> yeah, it's different. But like, here's the thing: when you live in like the woods, all you do is just like put your Barbies on a string and throw them in a, in a pond. Like, and then you bring them back. I don't know how to. <laughs> I don't know. That's, that's some we country did. shit right there. Yeah, like I don't know when you have nothing. Yeah, yeah. Else how, to do. how 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 uh, like how country? How much country do you have in you at this point? I mean, I didn't grow up on like a literal dairy farm, right. but like there were cows around me twenty four seven. Yeah. yeah. Like, um, I mean, there was some hick shit. Like, yeah. Have you it, ever milked a cow? Yeah, yeah, I have. I've always wanted to do that. It's kind of weird. What's it feel like? <laughs> like a dick. Like I don't know. <laughs> Amazing. Okay, cool. No, I don't know. Like, she goes amazing. She goes amazing. It's always like, see the cows, and I want to see what that feels yeah. like. You know. Yeah, it feels like that. that. Like, is that weird? Am I weird? No. She, Dim, Dimmy's from the Bronx, so for context. Okay. And, there and what are I cows what, here though, Jordan. So don't don't. Yeah. Even, well, you know, she. Yeah. Like you go. You go ten there miles where here. she's from. Yeah. But no one milks them here because yeah. no one's gonna drink. <laughs> right. <laughs> but I have found you know living in New York and L.A. people are just fascinated with Midwest rural cult culture. Um, and you reference your Midwestern roots in the album title. I do. Yeah. What was, were you, did you put a lot of, what was the thinking behind that? Did you like think, do I want to, do I want to say like from the Midwest or do I want to, you know, like, I just, I have a tramp stamp that says princess and I'm just from, you know, obviously the Midwest and yeah. I've always joked. That That's like some Ozark shit right yeah. there. Yeah. Tram vibes. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I just like loved the Midwest princess like title. Um, yeah. but the rise and the fall just kind of makes it more like a lore, like a, like a story. Yeah. Something. Like there's a narrative, like exactly. what, you know, what happened with like, were you, you know, you could, this is what the kind of deal where you like make up some narrative that you were, you know, an orphan and that you got picked up on the side of the road, right. and, you know, like no one knows really where she came from. Right. You know? I could be an orphan. Yeah. You could be That's an orphan. That's true. Now that you, you have the album, you have the title or you have, you have the tour going on. Um, do you take, does it feel overwhelming at all? Or do you feel just kind of like, you're so far into it you can't really like or do you ever take a step back and be like damn this is crazy i do both i feel like i feel like look around and like damn this is crazy and mm. then that's when i play video games but mm. i do feel overwhelmed currently i think i will feel better once i'm on tour but right now it's very daunting like it feels like i'm staring at something like directly in the eyes that is so scary like I, I'm just like, oh my God, I don't know what to do. <laughs> like, so you got to do some cool truck stop photos oh, for yeah. your yeah, truck stop reels. I, you know, get that big, uh, beef jerky. Um, you know, those trucks up that have like a full aisle of beef jerky. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Oh, I know. I know. Before we, uh, let you go. Um, we like to ask about favorite TV shows, movies, that kind of thing. What are you, are you a reality show person? Or are you a... Not a show person. At Isn't all. that crazy? I What's only Demi, watch Desperate... Demi, Demi, you found someone just like you. Demi doesn't really watch TV shows either, so... I don't... I only watch Desperate Housewives. Look, I don't know. I mm. just... It, because I know that it's not real. Like, this is my thing about... It's just... I love reality TV, though. Like, I don't I don't really watch it. But if I had to pick one, I, I'd do that only because it, there's, it could be real. I just, I don't know. Okay, interesting. Because <laughs> you know, like a movie's... What's yours? A movie's not real, so you're like, you can't you can't just like let it be a story. Like you just need it. Mm -hmm. No, I could, I could, you know, I could, I could swallow it, but it's nothing, it's, there's nothing like hearing a song and knowing that maybe that was a true story and that performance was like true to that person. You know, it was like... Interesting, okay. Live, you feel me? Yeah. Not to put the two against each other. That's just my yeah. Life. Okay, I hear you. I hear you. I'm more of a movie girl. I'm going to um, Bottoms tonight. I'm very excited. Oh yeah, have you seen Barbie? I saw Barbie. I did. I did see Barbie though. Shout out Barbie. What's your what's? I have not seen Barbie. What's your review? I think it was good. Yeah, I liked it. I just liked going with. I heard like, it's sad. More sad than you than people than you um, would expect it to be. Yeah, I mean it's a it's a pretty heavy topic. It's like pretty. It's pretty intense, so I can. It, it was sad at times, but I didn't like. Cry Do you have or a anything. favorite movie? I love Coraline. I love Coraline. I haven't seen. I was just. 
I was just thinking about how, you know, we got Halloween coming up next month or so. Coraline time. Yeah. Have you seen Coraline? No. Dem- Demi, recommend it. Um, it's a little creepy. Um, it feels like a kid's movie, but it's really not a kid's movie. I guess mm-hmm. it's animated, but. Scary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Love I also it. just saw that horror movie, Talk to Me. Have you seen I it? I have not. I haven't heard oh, of it. Oh, hell no. Holy no. fuck. Scary? Yeah, and I'm a horror fan. Do you. What's your favorite are, scary movie? Like one of the OG ones. Do you like the slasher stuff or the more like spooky stuff? I like the more spooky stuff. I'm just like, oh my God. Like, I get yeah, the gore. Yeah, if you're the slasher whatever. stuff, like, what's wrong? What's going on? I know. Mm. I love Blair Witch Project. I love Blair Witch Project. The Grudge scared the fuck out of me. I think The Ring is so good. Yeah. Like, I just damn I forgot about that one I have yeah. seen the ring yeah shout out the ring yeah I'm I'm too much of a weenie uh when it comes to scary movies even when I saw the sixth sense which is pg-13 that was scary it's scary and my mind wanders to where I was dead ass afraid that I was gonna start seeing dead people mm. when I left the theater mm-hmm. I'm like looking around like outside my door like is there dead people out here yeah. so yeah, I can't. I can't do it. I can't do talk it. Talk to don't see. Talk to me. It's like no fucking joke. It's scary. Really? <laughs> like, wait, what's it about? Just like I just like a de- it's like a possession movie, which are always oh like hell no. no 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 no. It's no that. joke. <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> so um, got some good recommendations from Chapel, uh, and she can do like a little uh, movie review corner at oh, some yeah. point or something. Yeah. Oh, so do you like social media? I like. I like it when I don't feel pressure f- about it. Mm. <laughs> like I like it when I'm just on to see what my friends are doing and like being stupid on TikTok. But but like when you have a new song out and your management's like, okay, you need to do ten TikToks in the next twelve days. It's hard. Yeah. It's difficult for me to do it because I just it feels so horrible. Mm. <laughs> feels horrible when I don't want to. You know, I mean that's with anything. When you don't want to do something, it feels horrible. But yeah. I appreciate That's the honesty. Though. I don't know. It just sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I think me, most artists would agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know anyone who's like, oh, I fucking love TikTok. You know. I think there's 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 kind of a a spectrum of 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 putting up with it. You yeah, know? I feel like I put up with it. Yeah, there's like people put up with it. And there's people who detest it. Mm-hmm. And. Uh, that's a whole nother conversation. Dim, Demi, we've had, yeah, Demi's, Demi doesn't love doing social media, but uh, yeah. Anyway, Demi, you got anything? You good to go? Yeah, no, I mean, I feel, I feel great. I'm so, thank you so much for coming on the show. You look awesome. I love the purple. Oh, thanks. What where's are you the, wearing the, right now? What yeah, is tell that? me. What's your yeah. shirt? Oh, yeah. Is that a thrift store situation? Yeah, or like? I always get thrift store stuff, but this is just a, like a rainbow unicorn. And I was trying to figure it's like a it's like a horse pendant you got going or oh, like yeah, a yeah it's a horse like whoa that's a little, wait uh, that just reminded me have you ever heard of the game Kingdom Hearts yes but I didn't I've never played it really mm-hmm. that's the only game I've ever played in my life but that shirt reminded me you should play that game yes. Kingdom Hearts Kingdom yeah. Hearts shout mm. out oh shout God. out Kingdom Hearts <laughs> shout out Square all right all right guys that'll be it for us catch Chapel Roan on tour. If you can, if you have tickets, if not, the album is out when? September 22nd. September 22nd. So if you're watching this after September 22nd, it's out. If you're watching it before, it's almost out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that'll be it for us. As always, go to popdust.com for the latest in pop culture and music news. Follow me on Instagram at Jordan Edward Studio. Follow Demi at Demi underscore Ramos. And chat, are you just Chapel Room? Yeah, at Chapel Room. Just we'll put it right here at the bottom of the screen. Uh... All right. Until next time, we'll see you later. Thank you.